If this predator comes for you, you don't see a shark. You just see two-inch triangular teeth. For decades, this ancient hunting machine has terrified beachgoers across the globe. This mouth of razor blades is just the necessary feeding apparatus of a super-sized fish. The great white shark is one of the world's most notorious predators. The largest fish in the sea feeds on some of the smallest. Plankton is the most abundant food in the sea. And whale sharks are one of three known shark species that filter feed on these microscopic plants and animals. The sharks filter plankton through pads that cover the entrance of the throat. Giant gulps at the surface draw water into the mouth, suctioning in the plankton. A single shark can filter more than 160,000 gallons of water per hour. That's enough water to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool in just four hours. We think of sharks as solitary, mindless killers. But in 2006, off the coast of South Africa, black-tipped sharks formed a gang of up to 200 strong. Dive operator Mark Addison was convinced they showed signs of organized behavior, even communicating using snaps of their jaws. But while experts failed to agree on what held the gang together, the shark's natural instincts were causing trouble. Spearfishing is a, is a very different style of hunting in a sense. And to make it even harder, you have to do it while you're holding your breath. So you've got to try and remain perfectly calm under extreme adrenaline rush situation. Keeping your cool is easier said than done when you're in black tip territory. A lot of the time you have to just shut off and just ignore the possibility of seeing a shark. For these spear fishermen, brushes with black tips have become unavoidable. If you shoot a fish, the noise of a fish struggling in the water will definitely call a shark in. A, a shark can hear that fish in the water from a long way out of visibility and it'll call it in immediately. As soon as one latches onto a fish on your spear, it'll wake the others up and they'll be rushing in as well. You can't control uh, a shark once it's grabbed hold of a fish on your spear. It's just going to swim away from you with that. Uh, probably bend your spear or, or break off the line. With black tip ambushes on the rise, some fishermen have chosen to fight back. If you see one, the first thing you do is start to swim towards it because they interpret that as uh, a body language where you're not scared of them. Best form of defense is attack. Don't give him the upper hand. Individual shark is quite easy to intimidate, but as soon as there are a few swimming around together, it's almost like it reinforces their bravery. I have had a friend bit in the water with me, and he was being aggressive and it didn't help, and uh, he nearly lost his foot to it. In this battle of apex predators, the intimidating black tips have a natural advantage. This is their turf. If there are too many black tips in the area, then I'll just get on the boat and move away, because you're not going to win. It's going to be one day that one will turn around and, and take his chances with me. It's better to just get out the water. It's their day, they've won, go home. So we're gonna start off with a very basic test. Now, one of the key things that sharks key in on is sound. It travels incredibly far underwater. So we have this low frequency sound transmitter that we're gonna deploy right next to the boat. We're not gonna use any chum, but we're gonna put this in and see if this attracts the sharks. The hammerhead's inner ears are specifically tuned to pick up low frequency sounds, like those given off 
by a struggling or injured fish. These low frequency pulses ring out like a dinner bell for the sharks. Over a mile away, the vibrations grab the attention of a 15-foot great hammerhead shark. The vibrations emitted by Craig's sound device pass through the tiny pores on the skin's surface and down into the lateral line. This main canal is lined with thousands of minute sensory hair cells, similar to those found in the shark's inner ears. Once triggered, they send a signal to the brain, alerting the shark of its prey's location. Thanks to the inner ears and the lateral line working together, the hammerhead can calculate the size, distance, and exact direction of its prey. This oil slick of fish and blood acts like a breadcrumb trail for the hammerhead. The grooves on the shark's hammer funnel the scent directly into the shark's nares. Inside, the scent enters a large chamber lined with plates of skin, which act like air filters. As the scented water passes through these filters, it allows the shark to identify the individual components and work out their prey and its location. With such advanced hardware, it's not surprising this shark can detect a single drop of fish oil in a body of water equivalent to an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Once the hammerhead smells potential prey, it triggers an automatic hunting response. The shark primes its muscles and accelerates towards the bait. Since their arrival on the Aliwal Shoal in 2006, the black tip shark gangsters have taken over the neighborhood using their superior numbers, their nerve, and what seems like innate cunning. Smarter sharks mean further problems for local fishermen who've noticed something chilling. The black tips are now one step ahead of them. We will go to a reef, find sharks there. We can't get fish out, we'll move to another reef. There's sharks there. How could the sharks be there the instant the fishermen were? Dive operator Mark Addison has a hunch He's already convinced the sharks are much smarter than scientists believed. Could they be smart enough to learn to link boats with food? To help him test the theory, he has called in shark learning expert Ryan Johnson. Scientists are quite skeptical, and, and I'm no exception. It's a very nice boat to be in in Mark's boat, where you can come up with these amazing hypotheses, and I have a lot of respect for that, because that's how you advance science. But ultimately, the science has to come in, because you've got to test it, you've got to see if it's true. Ryan has designed an experiment to test Mark's theory. They'll use a technique called acoustic telemetry to see if they can attract a shark without using bait. This tag? Okay. We want to get this into a, into a shark, into yeah. its mouth, let it retain it for six, seven hours. Okay. Once it's doing its normal thing, yeah. then we want to replicate a fishing boat. You okay. rev it up, rev it in, yeah. drive past, stop there. Okay. If the shark is conditioned to those engines, what it's going to do is start moving in. And as soon as it moves close to us, we're going to be able to hear it, and we're going to be able to track its movement towards or away from the boat. Acoustic telemetry is one of the only ways of tracking groups of large marine animals. It requires the tag to be attached to one of the black tips in some way. In this case, swallowed. Sharks can pick up sound over great distances. They will hear the engines as the boat zigzags over the reef, but will they associate the sound with a potential meal and respond? 
Let's get that receiver set up now. Okay. In the last hour, the black tips could have covered several miles, but Ryan's receiver will only pick up a signal if the tag shark comes back to within 500 yards of the boat. Nothing. For 30 minutes, there's nothing. But then, from out of the deep, a distant noise. We're getting the ping. We're picking up the shark. That's it. That's it. It's probably within 200 meters of us now. Intriguing. Could be on a something, wow. Mark and Ryan's experiment strongly suggests that the Aliwal blacktips have learned to associate the noise of an outboard motor with the expectation of food. Mark's groundbreaking theories have the potential to open up a whole new world of shark research. If this predator comes for you, you don't see a shark. You just see two-inch triangular teeth. For decades, this ancient hunting machine has terrified beachgoers across the globe. This mouth of razor blades is just the necessary feeding apparatus of a supersized fish. The great white shark is one of the world's most notorious predators. But still, it would be nothing without its 300 serrated teeth. They're designed to grip and rip through flesh, much like we use a knife and fork. And its jaw crunches down with almost two tons of force. What's even more frightening is this fearsome fish has a never-ending supply of battle-ready blades. The great white's teeth are rooted in soft cartilage, not bone, and often fall out or break. Its solution is rows of replacement teeth found inside the jawbone. The new teeth roll into action like a vending machine, meaning razor-sharp weapons are always at the ready. A great white can go through over 20,000 teeth in its lifetime. When hunting seals off the coast of South Africa, her bizarre but fascinating senses lead her to her next victim. The great white doesn't have regular ears for hearing, Instead, she hears with minuscule hairs found in tiny fluid-filled tubes along both sides of her body. When the colony leaves the safety of the rocky island for deep-sea fishing grounds, not a single splash or jump goes unheard by this shark's weird auditory system. The great white's nostrils are 10,000 times more sensitive than humans they can detect a single drop of sea oil in a body of water, the equivalent of an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Tiny jelly-filled pores on her nose can absorb minute electrical pulses created by the muscular contractions of moving prey. Meaning, this fishy beast can home in on a single seal's heartbeat. This super predator's eyes are also five times the size of ours. And behind each retina lie crystal plates that reflect light in the murky water. There's nowhere to hide. seal can do against this three-ton fish and her mouth of blades. 